What's going on guys, this is Miasin back at it with another DB Vito. This time we're gonna have Pure Splite, if I recall correctly, against Labyrinth. Very interesting deck and very fun deck as well. It's one of my favorite Shop Heavy decks out there. I want to say it might end up being the better Eldritch, depending on if we can get some juicy ass support. The new Lady Labyrinth or whatever, the, the, the quick effect one that actually sets any trap card is absolutely disgusting. So you can expect to see some really disgusting plays in this match. So before this video starts, make sure you like and subscribe. Check me out on Twitch and Instagram, blah, 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 blah. You already know the drill. Who's going to win the dice roll? It's going to be Labyrinth. Now, out of every deck that can win the dice roll, trap decks, when they win the dice roll, they have a tendency to be really nasty. And this opening hand could have been good going first or second. So Ariana, the Stratos, as well as Evenly, so again, could have been good going second. Fenrir, so a lot of uh, pretty nice cards, but Fenrir is like universally good. Prosperity, Chandra against Spurred Jet, Swafrog, Magnamut, Pixies, and Valor. So he's going to start off with Fenrir in the wrong column. <laughs> Don't really want to open up yourself to relinquish Tanima, so I would actually put it in uh, column number 1, 3, or 5. And then Normal Summon Ariana again in the wrong column. That's going to get hit by Valor, which is the correct card to Valor. You don't really want to Valor a, uh, you know, a Fenrir. And he's going to be getting the Welcome Labyrinth, and I think at this point you can't really do much. I would go Chandra to discard the evenly matched because... It's a, little it's a little useless when you have a bunch of cards in your hand, but unfortunately he's going to be discarding the Fenrir, which I think is incorrect because it doesn't necessarily always establish a lot of board presence because the board can get broken since it's a trap deck, so it benefits off of grinding the game and keeping a Fenrir for your follow-up is very important, whereas evenly, when you have like a bunch of cards on the field, will not do anything. So he's going to be setting two cards. I guess the argument is that you kind of want to dodge like a random sprite smashers like that's blind that could be banishing the evenly instead of the welcome or something. I don't even know, but whatever. Uh, so on the end phase, he's going to go magna mode effect and that he's going to be getting hit by the Fenrir because that happens on resolution. So yes, you can actually do that, but it's still going to be searching, no problem. So yeah, he still gets the Druid Worm, but he doesn't have the body of uh, of, Dru uh, of the Magnemut on the field. And it's banished face down, so really nice removal. And he's going to be top decking, probably top decking the worst card in the deck, which is <laughs> a second Swap Frog, really bad, because it's basically a Garnet. It doesn't really have an effect, but I guess the good thing is that he can special summon it now, so he can use his normal summon on other things. So if this gets stopped, he can still like normal summon one of the one of the other splite and then special summon the other. So it's a bad thing that ends up being a good thing depending on the scenario. And when you have a handful of splite monsters, uh, you really lose to like one single compulse or like one archfiend glitch or something just basic. So yeah, he's going to now be special summoning the jet, which is going to be searching either for starter or smashers. Doesn't really, it's not really that important. And he's also going to be destroying the swath frog with the effect of Labyrinth, uh, sorry, the Labyrinth, Labyrinth, uh, that's the name of the card. Yeah, I mean, I already knew that, but whatever. Now he has the Splite Starters, so a bunch of extenders, and he doesn't really have a lot of interruptions anymore because, well, he still has the Fenrir, but it's not super relevant, and uh, he's going to, how did he get the Solemn Strike? Oh, it's uh, because of the draw of Ariana, and if you want to, you can set it right away. The only uh, issue is that you can't use it that turn, unless you have, like, the Koklu or whatever, the Clock, yeah. It's so the level one monster, but he's still going to be, uh, you know, you know, keep a. Uh, he's going to be special summoning now, so special summon the blue. No effect though, kind of has to, unfortunately. Otherwise, it will get banished off of the Fenrir, and he's not no longer going to have anything. And he's going to be summoning the Sky Cavalry Centauria, which does absolutely less than nothing because he cannot make Zeus because of his own sprite starter. And I think you guessed it because of the fact that he cannot play through three interruptions. There's practically nothing at all that he can't uh, that he can do. He can't make Downer. He can't make Zeus. So that's going to be game one already in the hands of Labyrinth because, again, when shop decks go first, they're absolutely nasty. Now, game two, Splite is actually going to be able to go first. So Pot of Prosperity, Red, Imperm, Splite Blue, and Starter, very, very good hand. You can actually end on everything. So Carrot, Red, and the full combo with, like, maybe Toad and stuff like that. Well, definitely. Against uh, another really good hand. So Lady of the Labyrinth, Archfiend, Glitch, Fenrir, Prosperity, and Welcome Labyrinth. This Prosperity, if it resolves, you can banish six and then dig for evenly. However, it, he, we know that he plays Swap Frog, so he can definitely make Toad. Anyways, normal summon the red and then special summon the blue, search the jet, and then search for the smashers. Because he already has the starter, so there is no reason to search like a second starter. It doesn't really make too much sense. Link into Splite Sprint, send the Angler to summon Double Beaver from the deck. Uh, that is the obvious play, and then Gigantic Splite, summon the Swap Frog, send Swap Frog, and then Link off for the L, for Vi back the Swap Frog, no effect. But he's going to be bouncing back the red to special summon it. 
That way, instead of the red being in attack position because he had to normal summon it, it's in defense position. So it's uh, a little harder to bait with like normal summon a monster and then attack over. So that has that is actually a very heads up move. Uh, kudos to uh, Pepe or whatever <laughs> for this um, interesting play that a lot of people don't really think about. And now he's going to be making Toad set three back row and pass turn there. Uh, I would, I don't know if a st starter on standby would make sense to like summon the carrot to like dodge su dodge stuff because you already have the toad to like negate uh, whatever, like a dark, no, 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 sorry, not dark ruler, but like evenly. And dark ruler, you can dodge it by holding the starter for like after you get hit by dark ruler. Anyways, special summon the Fenrir and then attempt to go into battle phase. He will not be chaining the elf, but as soon as he attacks, he can actually just lose out to like one single smashers. But it's still a one for two, one for two trade when you think about it, because with one single card you made your opponent lose the Smashers as well as the red, so you have two less cards to worry about. So that's still, even though it's not necessarily the best, uh, you know, trade, it's still not too bad. Now, Pot of Prosperity in uh, Main Phase Two is going to be activating its effect. Is going to be negating this. Now, negating and stealing a Prosperity is better than negating and stealing an, an Extravagance because. Uh, banishing random cards from your extra deck, not the best, but banishing cards that you know we'll, you will not need is pretty good. Now, he does have another Pot of Prosperity, so that uh, that kind of sucks, but it is what it is. And um, yeah, he's going to also go Splite Starter on... Uh, is that Main Feast 2? Yes, sir. Summon the Carrot, and then use the effect of Elf, Revive Back. Doesn't really matter. He can't Revive Back like at the Toad because there's no monster on the opponent's uh, board. I go for the blue, and that is going to be searching... I think I would have Revived Back the Jet to search Starter. I think it's a little better. Uh, he's going to be searching the jet now with the blue, and that's going to be end phase. So with three back row, one of them can be used, the two other not... I mean, he can't use the uh, Archfiend Glitch right now. He can use the Welcome Labyrinth, but it's most likely going to get negated. And the Terrors of the under uh, Overroot is not that good, because you can't really target the carrot. So he basically can't, can't really play the game, but the opponent doesn't necessarily know that. Anyways, Splite Elf is going to be reviving back the jet. I think it's a little too early to use the effect of jet, but I could be wrong. Maybe it is the correct sequencing. Uh, sometimes you actually want to apply as much pressure as possible with the cards on your field before uh, expanding the cards that you have in your hand. So that's the way you actually uh, beat the trap decks, uh, you know, when they have nothing. And also you go into battle phase ASAP so that you can inflict damage so that their solemns make them go to like very, very low life points so that they can lose in the grand game. Unfortunately, because of Welcome Labyrinth, you can actually tank that uh, attack by summoning the Lovely. And uh, yeah, if the Sky Cavalry can't do much, oh, he can use the uh, Archfiend Glitch now because the wel Welcome Labyrinth resolved. And the Imperium can be used on, well, yeah, this, but not the Lady because this cannot be targeted uh, by card effects when you control a set card. And of course, he's going to be able to send the Absolute King Backjack, which allows him to stack his deck and also get another trap card if he wants to. And I, he gets the Ice Dragon's Prison because of uh, because of the Lady. Yes, exactly. That allows you to set a card. And the trap, uh, the trap card that he gets off of Backjack can be used, unlike the card that you get off of Lady. So that's really cool. And now the Carrot is going to get negated. Uh, that was a set Prosperity, obviously, not an Imperm, because he uh, stole that. So setting in the same column is actually completely fine. And Main Phase 2, Normal Summon the Nimble Beaver. No Xyz Monster Battle, so you can't really make the Zeus now. Uh, the Nimble uh, Beaver can actually summon from the deck or graveyard. So if you're already done using the two beavers that you have, there's no reason to like summon back from the grave. Might as well like deck thin and remove that angler because it's not going to be a good top deck in the grand game. And then the Backjack is going to be getting him an Ice Dragon's Prison, which is not super amazing right now. But I mean, whatever. It's At least it kind of does something if he goes into like Gigantic. He can go Banish Banish and it's also pretty nice against Splite Elf. Anyways, Prosperity for six, I believe. Uh, I think I would have used the Prosperity that uh, I stole from my opponent just so I have more cards in my hand to, like, terrorize my opponent, <laughs> make him think that I might have a little more. Yeah, oh my god, but th that's a weird timing for the card because now he only really loses one card, which is not that great, honestly. And, uh, yeah, now he can go for Gigantic Splite, summon a monster from the deck. I can't believe the Labyrinth player, even going second, was able to do, like, all that just because he didn't really negate the right card with the Carrot because otherwise they really could have, like, sealed the deal completely. Anyways, the Splite Elf is going to be reviving back the Swap Frog. Uh, it's funny because he actually could have revived back the Toad and then summoned the Pixies because you can also summon Pixies when you control a rank uh, 2 monster. But I guess he really wants to make an Xyz monster. Oh, not even. He's going to make Mascarina. I still would have summoned back the Toad so I can recycle back a Water Monster for free. And uh, yeah, set the Imperm and pass turn. Uh, that is very underwhelming. Very, very underwhelming. You can't do much here. And he top decks Compose. <laughs> Remember that. Now he's going to get back the Ice Dragon's Prison with the effect of Lovely Labyrinth. The Splite Elf is going to be reviving back something. No, not even. 
He's going to go into a battle phase, well, at least attempt to. He's going to chain the Splite Elf, and there is one final card in the extra deck. Can you guess what it is? It's a really interesting card. It's Topologic Zero Burrows. And he's going to be able to revive back the Angler, use the effect, banish every single card on the field. And now he sets one, passes turn. <laughs> this is crazy. Nice extra deck, huh? <laughs> oh, man, this uh, this uh, Zero Boros is pretty strong. It's a one-punch man guy because he gains, uh, what is this, 24 multiplied by 2, 48. So this is 78. This is crazy, man. Normal summon the jet. This threatens lethal. If he attacks, it's going to be game over. But at the same time, it's your boy Compose is going to bounce back the Zero Boros and also get the welcome so he's not even in simplified game state, and because of that, he can actually win the game. Now, this is such an interesting match that we might as well go into the rematch game 3 game, which is also super interesting because who doesn't love Labyrinth, right? I might as well just give you guys a little bonus. And again, uh, huge shoutouts to these two players uh, for providing us uh, fantastic entertainment. But anyways, game 3, Absolute King Bagjack, Lady of the Labyrinth. I love this card so much, man. Oh my god. Solemn Strike, Archfiend Glitch, and the Labyrinth Labyrinth against Nimble Beaver, Splite Starter, Jet, Prosperity, and Jet. Very, very good hand. The only kind of issue is that you have a redundant card, but it doesn't matter. Now, he did uh, win the dice roll in the rematch because it's not like a real game three since he kind of 2 0 his opponent. Although, I will say, the Splite player definitely had an uh, the opportunity to win both games. So, mm, yeah, he kind of threw a little bit, but it is what it is. He, he actually said in the chat that he didn't really have experience against Labyrinth. Like, that was literally the only Labyrinth that he uh, ever played against. But anyways, the backjack is a very good uh, normal summon. It's not bad to draw and going to be stacking a card, and that is going to be Dimensional Barrier. Not too, not too bad, but I don't know if I actually would have done it on standby. I don't really see, like, the purpose. I would at least wait until my opponent summons, like, one monster, and then I would do it. Like, you summon the carrot, and now you know that every summon after that, you can't really respond anymore, so you have to use the D-Barrier right now. But he's not going to be doing that, so I, I don't really know what's up. I'm not sure if I really like this too much. But anyway, summon the other beaver and summon the jet, which obviously can surge the smashers, kind of try to break boards here, which is also very nice. But uh, blind smashers is not the way to go. I would not go for sp blind smashers. I would actually keep it for like floodgates if that is actually a thing. Prosperity is going to be activating its ability now. Get uh, Splite Starter, <laughs> very nice card. Yo, this card, they always draw it, man. Either Splite Starter or Prosperity into it. But I never, sp I never see Splite players with like five Splite monsters turn one. Never, never, never. No, 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 no. You stop the normal summon, they can always play. But yeah, Smashers is going to be banishing the Archfiend Glitch and he kind of has to, you know, chain the D-Bear because he knows that the D-Bear is there. The Labyrinth Labyrinth is going to be triggering its effect to summon the Lady and he's going to actually consider, oh, no, he's not going to do anything. Oh, no, he's going to negate the field spell with the Beaver. It doesn't die, though. It, it stays there because he didn't tribute a Link or a Rank 2 monster. And the Lady of the Labyrinth can actually still summon itself, so that was a huge waste of a carrot. I'm not really a big fan of that. Anyways, the starter is going to be summoning the blue, and the blue can search again. This is ridiculous, man. So many searches in one turn. Jesus. It would have been nice if Drill and Logbird was good against this deck, but it's kind of not because it can even search on draw phase. Like, are you kidding me? Now again, summoning in column number two, but it's not the end of the world because you know that this deck doesn't play Relinquished Anima anyways. It's just that I have PTSD from always seeing people summoning in the worst columns imaginable and playing into Mech Knight monsters because you never know what could happen. It's just like a good habit to always summon your monsters in column one, three, and five and the most irrelevant ones in two and four. But anyways, he passes turn on a very weak board. I am not a big fan of that. And uh, yeah, that's all he's really doing. Already going to battle phase to try to threaten the Mascarina. He goes Splite Elf to try to revive back the blue. That gets negated by the Solemn Strike, which is very massive. And now this can actually be targeted. So it's a, kind of a big problem. He's going to go into battle phase, jump over the Mascarina. Not even going to be uh, going to Unicorn. That makes no sense because uh, it couldn't... Well, it, shuffling the Lady of the Labyrinth would actually not do anything here because it's just like a 3,000 vanilla monster. And also, that would be the super incorrect move because now you have no monsters on the field. So then you can search Fenrir, or summon the Fenrir, which is even worse. And now he's going to scoop it up because there is absolutely nothing that he can do with like zero interruptions against a full combo, basically. Two level two monsters is full combo. Now, this is where it gets really interesting in game 4. So, the Labyrinth player is going to be going first. Solemn Strike, Ariana, Terrors of the Overroot, Ghastly Glitch, as well as Welcome Labyrinth. Normal Summon, the Ariana, and what is that going to be searching? Lady of the Labyrinth. Very good card. Special Summon it, and then... Oh my god, man. <laughs> Alright, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, standby phase, Welcome Labyrinth is going to be Special Summoning, and that will trigger its effect in order to use uh, the set the Deck Devastation Virus. Summon the Ariana, which is going to be searching... 
for Lab Labyrinth Cooklock, and I think you can understand that this combo is basically game against like almost everyone. Now, another issue again is that I would not use Deck Devastation Virus on standby. I would wait until my opponent commits a normal summon or at least tries to use the effect of blue and then maybe not use the effect of jet because I don't want him to search the Splite Starter or the Smashers. But, you know, make him waste a few cards. Uh, either, either way, he now has uh, hand knowledge, which is very important because now you can time your interu interruptions perfectly, and that's all you really need to win a game. So, I really like this combo of Ariana to search the Kook Lock so that you can use the trap card that you set off of Lady right away, and that could also fetch you Eradicator, Epidemic Virus, or Full Force Virus because it's a dark monster with gigantic stats. She has a big booty, yeah, very, very strong, very thick. <laughs> Alright, this is going to be uh, getting probably the Cosmic Cyclone. Uh, not the best value, like a Duster would have been nice, nice, you're a Lightning Storm. So yeah, that's the issue with like Cosmic in this format, it's good against Runic because of the Fountain. But it's not, it doesn't necessarily trade super well against these kind of uh, trap decks where you want to go like 1 for 3 instead of 1 for 1. Anyway, Splite Starter is going to be summoning the blue, which is going to be searching for the jet, and I think you can understand that. He doesn't even have to waste his Solemn Strike on that because on the resolution of the summon of blue, he can just go Ghastly Glitch, destroy it, and that is going to seal the deal. So that's really all I had to showcase for this uh, video. I guess it was like a four game match. Very, very fun. I mean, technically a double match, but not really because. Uh, the Labyrinth uh, player actually won thrice, and the Splite player won once, but he could have won thrice. So that's it for this video. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.